time for plan B. Time for plan B in many, many, many different areas in your life. Time for plan B. Good morning guys from this beautiful island, Kopangan, Thailand. This is my office for the next couple of months probably. Uh, I love this office. I love walking every morning on the beach and just discussing crypto blockchain life with you guys. Hope you enjoy the videos. Um, please do spread the word. Do do um, share my videos because um, okay, the reach will be bigger. Oh my God, the water is so clear today. I'm already looking forward to swim. Wait, I will show you the water, guys. Look how clear. It is so clear. You can see my feet like it is very clear. Fishermen just came in bringing the fresh fish to the island. So tonight probably again fresh fish. They were fishing all night and now they have these beautiful fish. Look, big ones. Very big fish. A squid. <sighs> I'm getting hungry. <laughs> guys not that much news after this uh, weekend so uh, I will pick out one or two things and don't want to make it too long video I think one out of, of the things I read is that 7.6 billion dollar is in stable coins waiting at the sidelines to enter the market yes you heard me correct 7.6 billion US dollar. You know you're able to buy 1 million bitcoins with this? So there is enough money on the sidelines in the crypto market already to buy 1 million bitcoins. The question is what are these mainly USD dollar teeters going to do? And who owns them? If you look at the March dump, which was a 50% dump, probably done by the miners at that time, it was selling about 300,000 bitcoins, if I remember com correct. Uh, then like one third of those 7.6 billion are like still in control of the miners. So you could say that they uh, hold those US dollar teeters to probably in the future pump the market because you know they need Bitcoin to be a good uh, price um, after the halving so maybe it's why waiting there on the sidelines to pump the market and together with the exchanges you know when you pump the market they earn more money because of all of the um, fees for of people trading the market and the miners need to keep the, the, the Bitcoin price stable so when the halving appears, they still earn enough to uh, run their businesses. So again, 7.6 billion US dollar teeter is waiting at the sidelines. This is such a beautiful fact because, you know, if it was normal dollars or euros, people should t uh, would need to take a few steps to get this money into Bitcoin. Like they need to uh, send the money from the bank to a broker, or buy bitcoins online and then send the bitcoins to an exchange or whatever you know there are many steps in between now 7.6 billion dollar is already in us dollar teeter so it's switched to bitcoin like this this is really cool and um, on the other hand what if those people huddling those US dollar teeter now 7.6 billion know something we don't know what if they think or they expect or they know that Bitcoin is going to drop to 2K, 3K, 4K area and that they hold those teeters now to buy Bitcoin at that low. This is exactly what you see in the market, you know, nobody knows for sure. All the indicators, there are many indicators, but many say and tell a different story. A few of them tell us we are going to retest or going to try to, to break the 8.4K because this is what we need to lead up uh, to now. So 
I'm, I'm talking about Bitcoin. Bitcoin going to $8,400 and try to break it. And then start try to break $10,400 to even become really bullish. But um, there are also indicators telling us, no, if we don't break the 7.3 region now, 7.3 region, we could fall back all the way down to 3,000. Nobody knows at the moment. It's 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 like it's moving between six and seven k, six and seven k, and there is going to be a big move. If it's going to be up or down, we don't know. The fact is that seven point six billion dollar in stable coins is waiting at the sidelines to enter the market, and this is just a really cool fact. I'm not going to walk all the way to the end of my office. Yes, my office is 400 meters long uh, because I don't have enough context to talk about today. But this is a very interesting one. Check it. Uh, I found the article on Cointelegraph. There's a lot of beautiful TA in the article. People predicting to go it up, uh, to Bitcoin to go up. People predicting Bitcoin to go down um, with beautiful charts. Um, the link is below. Uh, I always post the links of the articles I read. Uh, in the, the description uh, part of the video. Second thing, I, yesterday I was um, doing a five and a half hour long live stream on the Facebook group CryptoCoin Trader. This Facebook group has been around like three years now and yesterday was the third year anniversary. How you say this in English? Yes. and. <clears throat> so we did a live and in this live we invited a lot of uh, uh, blockchain people and interesting people into the live and talk about beautiful subjects um, we had uh, also the core uh, team and uh, you know the core admins and everything of the Facebook group uh, which were really intelligent people I didn't meet them all yet in real life but I met them now online and oh god these are really cool people and it was five and a half hours I woke up really early at six in the morning because we want to do it in US time. Uh, most uh, people in the group, the group is like 113,000 people, uh, subscribers, sorry. And so the most are US based, so that's why we try to adapt to the US based time. And one of the interesting people that was, that we spoke with, in my opinion was really interesting, was um, the founder of Uptrend. Um, his name was, oh god, Jeff Kiduru, Kiduris or something, I think. Oh, I forgot his last name. It's like difficult, like my name. Like everybody pronounces my name like Taihutu Taihutu Sorry, I don't remember your last name, but um, he's the founder of Uptrend. And Uptrend is one of the decentralized social media platforms I have been on since quite a time. Uh, I didn't. I needed to be honest and uh, to him yesterday and I told him, okay, man, I haven't been on the platform since December somewhere or January. But when I started to look back to our post in December, many of my videos and many of my posts were like seen 5,000, 3,000, 6,000 times. Um, there were a lot of, um, there, were, there, there was a lot of response to my post. There was also a lot of comments to my post so I find it very interesting to this I found it very interesting yesterday to discuss this decentralized social media platform Uptrend and um, the link to Uptrend is also in the comment uh, that's an affiliate link uh, come on join me uh, through using my affiliate link of course that's really cool um, then you're really my social media friend <laughs> but what amazed me was the numbers that Uptrend um, showed me one of the numbers is of, uh, was that if it comes to the most engaged platform in social media, Facebook was still number one. But the second one was Uptrend, if it comes to time spent on the website. So Uptrend was the biggest social media platform, the, the second biggest social media platform, if it comes to spending time on their website, it was something like 15 or 16 minutes and Facebook had like 18 minutes or something. So that's really cool. And then I started to dig in how many 
people are now on uptrend. Like uh, when I started, it was like 20,000 or 30,000 people were on uptrend. And now um, I think they are near 90,000 people already. And I think they started in 2020 in January, something around 60. So it grew with almost 10K, um, almost 10K users a month. And I will be completely honest with you guys. I don't think um, uptrend is there yet. And if it comes to the user interface, I think it can be done better. But if I see this big of growth already with this user interface, um, this only can get better. Um, I started posting again on Upfront because I just want to support this decentralized social media re revolution as well. Because, you know, every day I need to see people tweeting, huge influencers, good friends of mine. You know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time here with MM uh, Crypto, uh, Chris, MM Crypto here on the island, Carl the Moon, um, and they all get strikes on YouTube and they all have friends that YouTube channels are deleted. A, a, a guy I spent some time with, Tone Vase as well, his YouTube channel was deleted. Of course it was restored, but this is just, you know, this is just the decentralized organizations show their power that with one push of the button, they can hurt you. Because you spend all this time in creating this beautiful contact. It's your life's work. It's everything you do. It's, it's, it's your passion. It's why you are in this industry, you know? You to educate people. And then in one push of the button, like a pow, you're gone. Your monetization is gone. Everything is gone. This is the biggest disadvantage of uh, centralized social media. And this is what I think is the biggest advantage of these of decentralized social media they that that we as a community support each other we upvote our post we make sure that um you know you're paid in crypto directly not by centralized organizations that are receiving a lot of money from their sponsors and all the companies that are paying them to make place ads and then they decide how much of this money goes to you no in decentralized social media uh, we as a community make sure um, we earn what we need to earn if we do good posts so that was a really cool thing i'm going to sit here on this look look this the beach is full with these this is my seat yeah my desk chair so yeah i'm going to sit on this desk chair now the beach is full with them so that was really amazing to see that there were so many um you know engagements on uptrend like second most and then 90k users already 10k users extra every month and i then i was like digging even more into it and i was like okay so how many you know upvotes and how many um comments and everything were there and it was i i was literally a little bit shocked because they were like about i think i think it was about nine million nine million upvotes so an uh, upvote you get when you post a beautiful post, somebody gives it a thumbs up, it's an upvote and you get some uh, one up for it or something. And there were 9 million upvotes, which makes it a really huge uh, monetiz monetization uh, platform of your, of your videos and, and, and content as well. So I'm going to test it a little bit more. As I said, there are more around, uh, decentralized platforms. I'm also using Rebus. I'm also using Library. I'm even using Bravo, which is really cool to, to because I travel a lot, you know, so I can rate restaurants, hotels, and all that stuff. Um, all the links to these social media platforms are in my um, in the description below this video. So these two things are the main uh, parts of the news today, I think, for me. Um, yeah, and we talked about Bitcoin going up, down. Um, 7.6 billion yes that was interesting and uptrend social decentralized social media is very interesting um, okay then one more thing because it all ties these things together it's called anticipatory fear maybe I pronounce it wrong maybe I should pronounce it more in the English way and the separate anticipatory fear anticipatory fear anticipatory fear I don't know I don't give a shit I'm not English native something that has to do with anticipatory fear which means fear for things that could occur in the future this is one of the things that you know that that strikes 
my mind because why this kinds of fear control almost everything we as a human being do um, it's always that people live in fear and, and 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 you know that one of the the one of the quotes on our website is um, you know fear will kill a lot of your dreams the fear of losing everything will kill a lot of your dreams and it's not a negative quote it's a quote that really tells the truth if you have fear of things that could occur in the future you're fearing something that hasn't been proven to happen how can you fear something that could happen why would you choose to fear something that could happen in the future let's seek it in the big scale now here with COVID same people fear getting an killer virus if it even is a killer virus and because they fear it they lock themselves down they agree with social distancing they agree with all kinds of rules locking down their businesses not going to their jobs not doing their passions not going to music festivals not going to sport events soccer games because they fear that they could in the future get a flu this is what they this is what I, they mean by anti anticipatory fear we don't know because the chance of getting this flu is zero point of getting it and dying of it that's what I need to say the chance of getting this flu and dying of it is 0.0001 percent so all the actions we take all the mind chattering we have all the stuff we discuss on birthdays and online is all out of fear for what could happen in the future even worse is all out of fear of a 0.0001 percent chance that could happen to you in the future let that sink in H how can we have this amount of fear in us that we fear something that could happen yes I would fear now if this I'm here in front of this jungle part and there comes a lion I would f I would fucking fear this lion or there comes a huge snake I would even feel fear for this huge snake because I see it I can touch it it's near it's true it's real if I see my kid on, on standing on, on a cliff or here up up there in this high palm tree I could fear the kid fall down you know because it's there it's I see it and, and even then I cannot influence it because it will fall when it needs to fall probably and then it will learn that it not, not, doesn't have to climb this high anymore but these things are are clear to me that you could fear these kinds of things but it's not clear to me how I could fear this snake tiger kid in this palm tree when I'm sitting on the terrace in my house drinking a coffee and somebody tells me on the media or in the media sometimes tigers come out of the forest sometimes a snake comes out of the forest sometimes kids fall out of a palm tree so why would I fear this if I'm enjoying my coffee in the morning looking at this beautiful view there is not one not like one millisecond that my brain is fearing this and and though we live in this state of mind that we fear that we live that we live after fear we live in fear maybe that's the correct English I don't think this is the correct way of living because you know you never know what happens you never know how the day will go you, you, you think you prepare, you think you plan, but as you know always, plans will change. Yeah, you can plan to, to get up at 7 and take the train at 7.30 and go to your job, but then the train comes too late and then your whole plan falls and then you all need to adapt again to the new situation. So why wouldn't you stand up in the morning at 6 and think, oh no shit, I'm going to start now to have fear that this train will be late. Nobody does this. So why do it now? 
I think the secret to to live a stressless and happy life is that you lose fear. Fear is really killing a lot of your dreams. And the fear will also kill the opportunity to have beautiful experiences. You know? I, I, all, I often compare it with bungee jump. Yes, if you look up so, to this tower or to this bridge and you're like, wow, I'm, I, 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 I'm going to bungee jump from this? Oh my God, then your heart starts pumping and you're like, oh, what if the rope breaks? What if this happens? What if the, 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 the rope is too long and I, I crash on the, you know, whatever you think. And then you start walking up to this ladder and you climb the ladder or you go with the elevator if it's really high. And this fear builds up more and more and more. But it's also a small part of it. it's exciting exciting you know it's not all fear and then you go up there and then you're on the edge you're on this edge you, you you're you're fixed with all the stuff and your the harness and your bungee jump rope and then you're on the edge and you need to jump that what you feel then that is fear because you don't know what is going to happen you're going to jump down of a cliff or a bridge or whatever a tower and then you you know you you're, you fear it and it takes a lot of courage to take this step. Mostly people need this small push in their back to even jump. Even though they know they are secured. They need this push. But then when they jump, they get adrenaline, they get excitement, they love it. They scream out of the top of their lungs. They, they just enjoy it. And after this jump, they are like, Wow, that was one of the be best experience ever. I'm on, I do it again. Some don't, some had, did vomit or whatever. I know I understand this, but most people then, uh, then lose the fear of it. And then by losing the fear, they do it again. Or they even do stranger things like parachute jumps or whatever, you know. But, but that's the game, to lose that fear. So if you take this example to life and you lose the fear of living, it will do the same. Yes, you might think now, oh my God, if I'm going to do the same life like Didi, I don't have a job, I don't have a house, where do I store all my stuff? Um, what if I don't like it? Uh, how do I make, uh, how do I provide for my family and, and make an, have an income? Um, do I, will I be able to find hotels? Uh, will I don't, won't I be attacked by lions in the jungles and by sharks in the sea? and? All these fear you need to overcome and then when you overcome overcome them you see that life can be really different this is the fear we have overcame as a family that's why we wrote a book about it uh, I hope you will you know you you had the chance to already read our book if not just order it on our website uh, the bitcoinfamily.com but this is exactly what we mean what I mean so if you try it then you know if the fear was grounded or not I'm not saying sell your house, buy bitcoins, I'm not saying anything of this. I'm just saying if you want to try the life, to live the life like we as a family live, then do it. Don't fear it. Embrace it. Enjoy it. You know, there is always the opportunity of renting out your house for three months or asking your boss, can I have a leave of, of three months, a paid leave or even a non-paid leave for three months. And then you just try it for three months. You take your backpack. You make your plans, even making the plans is already a beautiful time with your kids and you, you, you show your kids, oh, we're going to visit an elephant and, an, and monkeys and this and a jungle and the sea and you just start to plan it and you do it for three months. Give it time and then three months you do it and three months you enjoy it and after those three months you can say, oh shit, I, I had fear for nothing and it appeared to be really cool. Or you will say, okay, I did fear it for a reason and these fears now have been proven to be right. I am not the type to live this digital nomad life. But then still you did it. Still you visited a beautiful country with your kids. Still you had three months, no, not, not a job working for a boss, three months of complete freedom. So fear is a huge killer of dreams in my opinion. And that's why I think people really need to focus on losing fear for all that stuff um, in life that could happen oh wait i need to turn around because there's a lot of noise
So people need to lose this fear of, of things in life that could happen. And this is what they call anticipatory fear. And this anticipatory fear is the game governments and mass media are right now playing. They are creating fear for something that could happen in the future. But please don't believe everything they say. Do your own research, as they say in crypto. <laughs> you know, if they tell you that people fall down dead of an injection in Senegal, check it before you believe it. If they say Bill Gates is going to put like micro bus into your body to track you, yes, this could be true, but please check the facts before um, believing it. You know, I believe that they want this life where they have full control on us, this, uh, on, on us, like this hunger game society thing where everything is digital and where they know what you do, what you eat, where you go, what you pay, everything. I don't like this, but I do think this, this is a goal that they want to reach um, before 2030. That's why we are in crypto. You know, I want to have full control on my, on my money. I don't want anybody to be able to take it or to freeze it or all, all that kinds of things that they are going to do now. So um, again, I talked too, mu too much again. I'm, I'm always, ooh, I talk so much, sorry. Um, I want to keep the videos a little bit short so you can enjoy it. Um, I want to wish you guys a very beautiful week, whatever you're going to do this week. Enjoy it to the fullest. Enjoy every day. Enjoy every moment with your wife, with your kids and all other things you will do this week because it's all up to you to just make the best out of your life in whatever situation you might find yourself it is you that has control it is your mind chatter you can close and just make everything positive the glass is not half empty the glass is always half full and that is how you need to see life thanks for watching the video don't live in fear please don't have fear of sharing this content don't have fear of liking this content don't have fear of um, hitting this bell button so you'll be notified on every new video and um, you don't need to fear this because they will not come to your house and you know ask to pay taxes if you like my content or something just share it and then uh, have a check to all the links have a check to decentralized media i i uh, added the links uh, down below in the in the description and you know just let me know what you think let me know what you think about living in fear let me know what you think about the 7.6 billion dollar on the sidelines are they going to pump bitcoin or are they going to crash bitcoin or are you just waiting till bitcoin crashes and then buying bitcoin up again and let me know what you think about decentralized uh, social media because it has a lot of advantages advantages but also disadvantages and uh, when you think about Everything that is being posted cannot be deleted by a centralized organization. So this could all be also be harmful content. Uh, let me know what you think about this. And let me know what you think about um, what I said about living life in fear or not living life in fear. I think, and all these things I spoke about today, this is the most important part. It's time for plan B. And plan B can mean a lot of things. I will stop the video with zooming in on this very beautiful clear water because I'm going to stand in it for like five minutes and just cool off because I'm fucking burning. It's really, really, really hot. Guys, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow again.